Hello, welcome to Mocha Girls Pit Stop TV, where women of color refuel on motivation and ignite their lives. I'm your host, Terry Lomax, and today we have a very special guest and a good friend of mine on the show. She is a businesswoman. She's educated. She's beautiful, and she is also a wife, and she balances all of that, and she's going to tell us how today. I would like to welcome Ayana Miller to the show. Welcome, Ayana. Hello. Thank you for having me, Terry. You're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. So, Ayana, let's go ahead and just dive in. Can you tell me a little bit about, I know these a lot of these answers, but tell the community a little bit about yourself, where are you from, um, what's your background as far as education and training and all that good stuff? Sure. Well, I was born um, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and was raised actually in Newport News, Virginia. Um, that's where I met my husband. That's where I went to high school. Um, and went to college in William Mary at William Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia, for undergrad, and then went to grad school at Carnegie Mellon University. I did um, government as an undergrad major, and then public policy and management as my graduate major. And um, immediately after that, I, I went into consulting um, for government uh, clients and then uh, went to work for the government for a very, very short time. And an exciting ride, came over to San Francisco and met you and your wonderful husband and you guys are awesome. So it's been, it's been great to like hang out with you guys. But yeah, somewhere in there, I also like took my, I've always been a, like a designer and like crafty person, but I took it to the next level and started um, my jewelry business uh, called Love Yons. I took a class in um, San Francisco for jewelry designers and was like, you know what? I kind of like this. This is fun. It's something that's not my, like my, it's not what I did for like education, my background, but like I really enjoy doing it. It's just totally different. It allows me to be creative. So um, started doing that kind of like as a side gig and it's taking off so it's, it's, it's going really well. It's so exciting and I'm going to dive into Love Yans in one second but I want to ask you Yana um, if you could tell us why you are a mocha girl on a mission which is basically a woman who has overcome adversity and who lives dynamically in the face of that adversary tell us why why are you a mocha girl on a mission? Well I would say mocha girl on a mission because just because of who I am um, and like how I've grown up. Neither one of my parents went went to college um, and I had to figure out things on my own. My parents are together. Um, so I had that as a representation of my life of like how a marriage could be and how two people can work together even though like circumstances may not be amazing. They always made sure we had food on the table. Um, but because of that, I was always very driven to like research and investigate and figure out how things work because my parents would take me to the library they would be like i don't know how it works um but they would they they showed they showed me how to find the answer um so i've always and, and you know i think me and you both probably grew up where at a time when like we went from like books and like tangible materials to stuff being online on the internet and so we've seen and like appreciate the value of that information being free. Um, and so I've, I've just like gobbled that up and have always been the person to like, let me go find out. If somebody else is doing it, I probably can do it too. Like the, I have a mentality that like, it's possible. You just have to know the steps, know what questions to ask and um, not be afraid to ask them. So that's why, that's how I've been able to, to make it through. <laughs> well, that's so awesome. Now let's talk about Love Yawns. I have one of my beautiful, Love Jan's bracelet right now. Can you tell us, like, where did that concept come from? What, like, just tell me about that process. Where did the concept come from, and how did you come up with the idea to create this brand? Yeah, so I was, we had, we used to have craft night as kids. Um, I, have a, I have a younger sister, and my family, we would just always make crafts. And my parents have recently been, like, making crafts, um, like, over the past, like, five years or so. And I would go home, I was living in DC, and I would go home for the weekend just to visit, and we would be making crafts, and I really had a lot of fun. Like, my parents like to make beads, like paper beads, and just like different types of jewelry. And I made this necklace one day, I was putting these components together, just kind of playing around, and I really liked it, and I started wearing it, and then um, my husband's aunt, she was like, oh, I want some of those, like, can you make it for me? And so I made it for her and she started getting a couple friends that asked her where she got it from. And I realized at that point, I was like, okay, I can go back to the store and I can buy all these components um, or I can make them myself. Like I was like, how do I 
I, oh, that's really what happened. I went back to the store. I couldn't find the pieces I needed, like the components for like that bracelet you have. Yeah. And I, it made me start thinking about like manufacturing and like, how do I go about like the wholesale process? Um, and like, how can I also take control of that process and, and, and thinking about materials in a different way? And it just kind of led to this whole discovery of like, well, I can make it. What can I make it out of? How do I learn how to do that? Um, and, and from that, I took a class. So that was like maybe six months that went by kind of investigating. And um, I took the class and figured out, whoa, there's a lot more that I didn't know about this space. And even with just taking like one class, there's a lot of skills that I, I developed. And um, it was kind of like, you know, I like this, but I don't want to quit my full-time job yet. But this is something that, that I am enjoy, enjoying doing. And it's a way for me to give back. Um, to myself and invest in myself. I've been like doing stuff for my work um, and for my house and my home. And like, what about me? Like, what am I doing? What am, what am I doing for myself? And so I named it Love Yans um, because it's a reminder for me. My nickname is Yans. Um, one of my best friends calls me that. And um, it's a reminder for me to love myself. Um, and the shop is how I do that. So I'm, I'm investing in myself by making things because it's just a space for me to be in my own little world. Um, but I also wanted, I started making bangles that say love and then your name too, because I wanted other women to remind themselves that they should also be thinking about themselves all the time, every day. Um, I, I felt like there were times at work when I was like sad or like would think negative thoughts, like, am I supposed to be here? And I would look at that bangle and be like, yes, you are. Like, you are a mook girl on a mission. Like, you are here for a reason and a purpose. No one else is going to tell you that. Um, so that's what, that's what the business means to me in a long, long way. And then also what the jewelry means. It's, it's a reminder for you to love yourself. That's so beautiful. And honestly, Anna, I know when you told me that, and I have my Love Terry bracelet, and it's so funny that something so simple can be so powerful because I had those days, too, where, you know, as a – woman who's in business and you trying to grind out. We have our days where we're not feeling so great. And, you know, sometimes you, we know what we need to do to remind ourselves that, you know, you're on purpose, you're supposed to be here and all that. But sometimes just looking down at your wrist and seeing love tear, you know, on my arm, that just really did something for me. I remember sharing that with you. So I want to ask, like, it, do you have any rewarding experiences that you can think of off the top of your head that you've had since you've been in business for yourself with your, inspirational line of jewelry um like yeah yeah jewelry? okay yeah yeah so i had a moment um where i was i was shipping jewelry back home to virginia we're in california now and um i didn't i was scared to take it to the next level i was scared to go online um just because of fear like fear that it wouldn't be what someone else was doing um you know it wouldn't be up to the quality I think sometimes as women, especially women of color, we have this idea in our mind and it's gonna be so great. Like everybody wants Beyonce quality, like everything, production, pictures. And I, I, I had to get out of that framework and just say, you know what, I need to start where I am. Like my husband takes beautiful like photos. I have, we have good cameras. Like there's no reason for me to not be able to take pictures of my stuff and put it online. Um, and so I, I, I started my Etsy shop um, in December and have slowly started to get sales. But for me, that was, that was huge. Like just, just putting yourself out there in the world and, and, not, and it, my immediate thought was like, oh, what if I get too many sales? And it's like, no, you're not going to. Like nobody knows you yet. You have to put yourself out there. So just these things we tell ourselves are going to happen or like we won't be able to control this or that. You just have to take that first step and do it. Um, and then other things will happen. And so the, the long story short of that is that a company reached out to me um, in San Francisco about like doing a pop-up shop and they just found me on Etsy. And since then, a lot of people have reached out and um, like for business reasons, like, hey, can you send me your stuff? I'd love to promote it on my site. Um, and it, it's just been a great forum for not only selling, but reaching other people and connecting with other people who are interested in the message behind the jewelry. So it's been amazing. That is so awesome. And, you know, being a fellow creator, though I don't make jewelry, but, you know, creating content for the blog and that whole journey, isn't it so amazing when you have an idea in your mind and you literally just like write it down and you think about it and then you see it come to fruition and you see the fruits of your labor? Isn't that just so amazing? Yes. Yes. It's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Like seeing that, you know, coming out to one of your pop-up shops and seeing you there with your products. I mean, you had 
quite a few products there and it was so official. And I was like, look at that. You literally just thought of this idea, this concept to, you know, give back to yourself. And now you have this, this business. It's so awesome. Can you kind of give us an overview of a day in the life of Yana? Like what does a typical day look like for you? Because I know you still work full time, but then you also focus on your business. So what does that look like? And then man, being a wife as well. I do. I usually get up about um, 6 a.m. and I like to sleep in. I have not gotten past that. I know a lot of like, um, I've read a lot of books that say that like people who are successful wake up very early. So I'm just going to put it out there and say like, I'm not there yet. <laughs> like 4 a.m. early. I'm trying to get to that point where I'm up at 4 a.m. But I get up about 6. Um, I get ready to go to the gym and we'll like prepare stuff, answer a few emails for work. Um, and then go ahead on to the gym, I have a trainer that I meet with, and we'll do that for about an hour, we'll jam out. And then I, I'm in the office um, working all day, just doing my, my daily job. I may check in on Instagram, Facebook, um, have some scheduled posts going out for Love Yawns, responding to any you know, customer questions, things like that. Um, and I have a job where that, I'm thankful that I have a job where I could be able to have that flexibility. They trust you to you know, manage your time the way you need to. And then um, when I get home, I get home about 5, 5.30, and we'll, we'll respond to customer requests. I have jewelry that needs to go out, orders coming in. I will be grinding from like 5 till 10, 11 sometimes. Um, I usually try to get my orders out within like one to three days. So if I need to like special request something, I can get, get, to the, um, get the materials that evening too. Um, and then just work out somewhere in there. I managed to get dinner heated, started something. Um, my husband has been a great support. He like will do the parts he can. Bless his heart. He doesn't really cook that much, so I gotta gotta help him out. But he's been he's been supportive and, and getting like a lot of the other stuff done. But that's a, a typical day. Is like into the night right now. Like just working, really giving it all to to both of my 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 jobs. Yeah. Wow. And let's talk a little bit about investing in yourself. Like in the beginning of this, you know, this journey to, you know, being a businesswoman, I know personally that there, it takes a lot of investment and people don't necessarily talk about that or really realize that, that you're not going to start off day one, just making money out the door. Not usually you don't. Right. So let's talk a little bit about investments. Like what kind of investments did you have to make in yourself? And did you value the importance of that in the beginning or did you kind of have to get to that point? It's a, it's a lot of investment. Um, I, I, I think you have to think about it uh, in a new way. You just have to, you have to start thinking like a, a business person. And you, you often hear, at least I did growing up, like, oh, like this purse is an investment or like, you know, this is going to get me this new job or this outfit is going to be an investment. So we talk about investments in the, in the black community, I feel like a lot. Um, but when it actually comes to like, what that means for a business. It's a different, different number and there's a calculation. Um, and so, yeah, you really do have to start thinking about, it's, it's hard, um, taking classes, um, buying materials for like this type of business. There was a consideration like, do I do drop shipping? I could easily like find somebody else that already makes jewelry and then drop ship it, which means that they, I just post the stuff online. I don't even have it in inventory. I just post a picture of it. And then somebody buys it and I am able to get it from that drop shipper and they ship it and everything. Like that is a whole business, e-commerce business. Um, that's a potential <laughs> um, for anyone to do. But I mean, like there's just all these things you have to consider. That's, there's an investment of putting up the website for that. Um, but yeah, there, there are costs. Um, and yeah, you have, to do, you have to do your research and figure out what's best for you at the time. Um, I've been recently reading about um, Ming Lee is another woman who started this huge like um, hair care yeah. like, company. I follow her a lot. And she was talking about how she invested like $500 for her first set of hair that she's resold. And it's, that's like inspiring to know that it doesn't take that much money, but you do have to think about it differently um, and think about it as like, putting it back into the business immediately. It's not something you spend and then you get money and then you're ball out of control. It's everything you make has to go right back in for your supplies, for your marketing, whatever it is. So yeah, it's a lot. 
so, so true. And I think it's so important for us to realize that we do have to invest in ourselves because sometimes our, our knowledge is limited. So it's like once you reach that point and it's like, okay, I don't really know where to go now. You got to sacrifice, save that money, you know, refrain from getting those Beyonce tickets or the new shoes, <laughs> save that money and, you know, invest in your business. It's, it's, it's serious. So let's talk a little bit about, I know that, let's see, your jewelry, it takes, let's see, you use different, um, what is it? What is the word I'm looking for? You use different tools and supplies for different pieces. Can you talk a little bit about what it takes to make your jewelry? Because when I, when you first told me about making jewelry, I thought it was, you know, beads and string or something. This is like legit. You have some serious tools. So can you talk a little bit about those? Yeah. So I use, uh, like I use heat. I have, I have a butane, like a, a torch that I use for, um, heating up silver sterling silver this is like precious metals um and gold and you actually melt it down to create like the circle for a ring um, or you put like pieces on on the ring um i also have a line of bangles that i put and personalize and can custom make for people with their names on them or any other messages that they want and there's a machine that allows me to stamp it pretty quickly um, some people do it by hand uh, but it starts to get really like cumbersome if you do it by hand and it's a lot of it's, it's a ton more work um, but even with like the machine um, which is like you were saying like that's a cost too to get the machine um, like you have to put time into it so like soldering can take anywhere from like 30 minutes to an hour two hours depending on what you're soldering um, there's also saw, um, sawing so cutting things out if I have a piece of sheet metal, that's how a lot of stuff starts out. It's like a piece of sheet of like silver, sterling silver or gold or copper. And you literally sit there and saw it down. And I got my goggles on. It's not sexy at all, but it's really, really fun. Um, yeah. yeah. Wow. So you really, you be grinding, girl. <laughs> <laughs> on your Instagram with you behind the scenes doing that, that would be so cool, so cool to see. I know I'm still working on that. I have I have goals for sure of like showing the showing the process behind it and finding my own voice about like how I want to present myself. Like, am I the face of my company? Do I want to like take more of a behind the scenes role? And like, I don't know. So I'm still, yeah, I'm still figuring out what that looks like. Um, yeah, That's so awesome. So let's talk a little bit about any challenges. These don't have to necessarily be related to business per se, but um, one thing we talk a lot about on the blog is self-esteem, confidence for um, women of color because we have a very different journey than, you know, a lot of other women out there. Can you talk about any challenges that you faced along your journey um, to get to the point that you are now and kind of how you overcame those? Oh, yeah. I. It's funny. I look back on moments where people were discouraging and how resilient I was able to be in those circumstances. Um, I remember in grad school, I met someone, I didn't even know this person. Um, I, was inter I was working as an intern for this nonprofit, and I told this guy I wanted to go into consulting, and this was in Pittsburgh, and he told me, he's like, it's really hard to do consulting, like, it's very competitive and cutthroat, and, you know, like, I don't know why you think you're going to be able to do that, and, I mean, I did it, I did it, and, and that was that. Was that. Um, and, and even, you know, sometimes it's difficult working at a tech company. You don't always see a lot of people that look like you. The community is growing um, and it's getting better. But it, it can be hard when people go to your room and, you're in, and like go to a meeting room and you're facilitating conversations and they don't recognize that you're the person that's facilitating the conversations. They think they're in the wrong place because they're not used to seeing people that look like us in the conversations, leading conversations. So it's definitely a daily, like having that reminder, like love yourself because other people aren't gonna do it. Um, I, I just, I, I think I've been able to kind of stay internal and stay positive regardless of what's been going on around me um, just because of that, a strong, like a strong mental, me mental picture of what, where I wanted to be and what I knew I could accomplish. Haven't let the, the naysayers <laughs> get to me. That's a trip. You, you are speaking the truth because it's no joke walking into a place and not having anyone that looks like you can put, sort of relate to you. So I, I totally, totally get that. Um, what about what about what's next for you and your brands? Like, what do you envision doing in like the next year or so? Oh, man. 
So <laughs> a lot. I do want to do more videos. I want to do behind the scenes books. Um, I want to expand the line, expand the line um, a bit and, and do some different, like, do some different designs, um, get more like IG, like business influencers involved and just bring more attention and awareness. You're definitely inspiration <laughs> with, with your community. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to get people like build momentum and get people interested in your product and, and also like make sure your products are something people want. Um, so yeah, I, I'm just trying to make sure manage that, like all, all of those processes and things. Um, yeah, and then also I want, I'm going to be starting to do more blogging. Uh, I realized that there's a lot of women who, who don't know about jewelry and like talking to them about, oh, like I have a jewelry shop. They'll ask me simple questions like, how do I know my ring size? Or like, what's the difference between uh, like 14 karat gold filled and uh, gold plated? And so it seems like there's an opportunity here and maybe I'm in a good place to do it to like educate women who are maybe going from the costume jewelry, like the Forever 21, the H&M right. jewelry, to wanting to buy more fine jewelry, the Tiffany's, or people who want custom that's in between, knowing that you, there's an option, you don't have to spend thousands of dollars to get like nice pieces that you can wear every day. So I'm excited to like kind of play in that space and be that voice for, um, for, for women in the jewelry industry. That's so cool. And Yana, what keeps you motivated? What do you do on those days where you're at work, you work your eight to nine hours, and then you get home and you're like, oh, I still got to do dinner. I still have to grind out. I don't feel like it. I'm tired. Like, What motivates you and keeps you going? What, what rituals do you have? <sighs> prayer. <laughs> Definitely a lot of prayer. Um, and then I just try to stay inspired. I listen to... Um, like podcasts and videos and read anything, anything I can grab my hands on about other women who are doing things and are have been where I've been but have made it past it. Um, it's so important. I, I'm still like, there, you can't underestimate the importance of mentors. And even if you can't find them like tangibly, like sit down in there with them and have coffee, there are women out there who are teaching and preaching and telling their story. You just have to be willing to listen. Um, and so I just, I'm like constantly trying to soak up all that stuff, different, different moguls, um, listening to them and reading. It's this, it's, there's just no, there's no end to the amount of stuff you can get when you go look for it. That is so true. I totally agree with that hands down. And Yana, the next question I have for you is where can people find you on social media? They want to follow you and get some of your products. Yes. On Instagram. I'm always on Instagram. I am at love. Yon's Jewelry, and I'm also on Etsy, um, Love Yon's is my shop name, um, I'm on Facebook, Love Yon's, so any, basically anywhere you go, Love Yon's, I'm, I'm there, I'm also on Pinterest and um, Google, you can, you can find me on Twitter, yeah, all that. <laughs> I'll have links below as well, so you all can check out Yana and Love Yon's. Ayana, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Terry, for having me. Of course, of course. I'll talk to you later. All right. <laughs> Bye. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found at least one nugget or one takeaway from today's interview. If you're looking for a positive community where women inspire women, feel free to subscribe to the Mocha Girls Pit Stop blog. You can visit mochagirlspitstop.com or you can click the links below to subscribe to our blog. You'll receive free resources along with our weekly inspirational newsletter. And I really hope to see you in our community. Thanks so much.